Well, hello everyone. Yes, as you can see, I have just got this today. I've been down to Salisbury Model Centre um, to pick this up. He's one of the, as far as I can say, few at the moment who've actually managed to get hold of this. I think there's a few others. But as of the weekend, even Hannant's didn't have it in stock yet. So I've mentioned it's Lancaster, it's the Hong Kong models, 148 scale one. I would love the 132nd, but I haven't got the room for it or possibly the skills. So I've really had to clear the bench. I've even had to go back to my old camcorder so because it's got a slightly wider angle lens to fit it in. Anyway, let's get the box open. Oh, let's just go through a few stats, shall we? Number of parts, 362. It's got a 648mm wingspan. That's over two feet, isn't it? And it's 443 millimeters in length. That's over a foot in length. Uh, I'm old-fashioned. I still work in feet and inches. Um, how will this come out? I'll stand it up on end. There's a few CAD images. Um, warning things. Um, who imports it? Backman, all modern railway people. And on this side, this may come out upside down. You've got the, the other way. You've got the two options in there. You've got the famous S for sugar, which I remember looking at as a teenager or a young teenager actually, perhaps not even in my teens at RAF Hendon. I'm wondering was the slogan, no aircraft will ever fly over the Reich territory, Hermann Goering, but now I understand it. And there's another one here which was based at Syaston, I think it's pronounced, uh, in December 42, and this one was based at Waddington in 44. It was actually uh, part of the Royal Australian Air Force. Anyway, I want to see what the aftermarket guys are going to do with this. So, as I said, uh, one last thing. Before I get the box open, it says Avro Lancaster series. So I'm wondering if they're going to bring out a Dan Busters and perhaps a Mark III with it. Be interesting. What I'd also like to see is a new 148 scale B24 Liberator. So Hong Kong models, if you happen to see my humble video, consider that. So the first thing on top of the box is the instructions, which we'll look at. Air parts in a separate bag with a card backing to protect them. They look good. Looking through there. So I will come back to these, obviously. Then we've got the fuse large. So just to give you an idea of the length, that's a, yeah, I'll turn it over to 300 millimeters, 12 feet inches. So you can see it's quite a good size. So that's one half fuse large with a few extra bits in it. And the other one. You've got wings, top and bottoms there, inside flap detail, and again that is over 300 millimetres, so very nice. And then obviously you've got the port wing, because that was a starboard one, I believe. And then here it looks like Bombay doors, fairings, we'll have a good look in there. So, so far that's one, two, three, four, five sprues. Six, if you include, because there's actually two in there. Seven, eight, nine, ten. There's lots of little ones in there, not going to count those. And we've got another couple in there with the engine itself, and uh, even the rib structure included. So, put my ruler down. You've got the decals in here, which I'm not going to open, I'm going to open decals, and some, <coughs> excuse me, photo etched parts. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. And uh, what have you got there? The, the seat belts. I'm sure the aftermarket guys will be all over this. And then you get a nice picture of the box art. Almost the size of the box. Um, with the one with Mickey Mouse on it. It's not Mickey Mouse, is it? What was it called? It was called... can't read that. But we'll have a look at that's on here, isn't it? It is... Admiral Prune. That's a bit different. But a nice picture, but just a shame they had to put their their uh, logo on there, which spoils it a bit. They're worth claiming that, so we'll keep that flat in the box. 
and we'll put the decals and photo extra back in there and we'll jungle through the instructions. A little bit of the history of it, how it was developed from the uh, Manchester, the twin engine valve uh, bomber. It's a yeah, nice bit of, bit of history of it. <coughs> like no surprise, how much of this can you guys see? No surprise, you start with the cockpit area, pilot seat, multiple pieces, uh, flight deck, radio operator I think, navigation table, uh, various other pieces, I don't know what all the bits are. And I don't care how much on the um, Pixis kit apart, if it looks like a Lancaster, it's a Lancaster as far as I'm concerned. Um, Deviating slightly, I remember being given, I must have been in my teens, the 148th Tamiya one, which now costs almost as much as one of these, and I believe that has been correct for using large shapes and things, but I seem to remember slapping it together and painting it with a hairy stick, and yeah, being quite pleased with it. So, bits of photo etching and out, still working on the interior. Obviously, this is the Flora Bombay, which is here. Hope you can see all this. Looks like glazing strips down the inside, more details, repeat on the other side. I didn't know what that was for at one point, but I don't know. It's for launching something. Uh, glazing, then you've got an alternative piece here by the looks of things. You can use it as a plastic or you can use a bit of etch, which makes it a bit more detailed. Closing up the fuselage halves, moving on to the turrets. Um, oh, I'm seriously going to wait for somebody to bring out a masking set for this. Yeah, working on the rear, mid upper and nose turrets. Canopy framing. Let's hope they haven't made the same mistake with the tailplanes that they made on the 132nd, where you put two upper halves and two lower halves together, and it didn't make a, an up and a down on each side. So hopefully they've done that correctly this time. Bomb load out, I'm not sure what the big thing in the middle was for, it was a fuel tank, I really, as I say, I'm not an expert. Um, tail wheel, uh, that's an optional extra there I think, not sure. Yeah, some sort of, uh, oh that's for one of the other markers. Not sure what that was underneath, got some bits to remove and if you want them uh, to do it as a closed bomb bay, adding the opening mechanisms on the interiors and these bomb bay doors again. Various little bits, bomb aim and navigator window, bomb aim is window wasn't it, aerials, ferry around the mid upper, installing the turrets and the glazing work, installing the tail planes. And while we go through these people who do reviews, because you can see from the pictures, you do get four engines with it. So I dare say somebody like Edward will be, or Edward will be all over those four engines, four props, make up themselves. Going the two halves of the wings together, removing little tiny bits on the uh, inside of the nacelles. I think really if you wanted to do an in-flight one it would have been nice if they made the landing the gear doors as one bit and you just cut them open, just mould the line on the inside, that would have been nice. You compose the flaps down, so yeah, that would definitely be all over this. So halfway through the book here, uh, making up more nacelles, uh, a slight variation, I don't know. Uh, no, it's making up the other wing, isn't it? Yeah, flaps again. And these are some odd bits, make 14 pieces. They look like they go in there. So you've got to just cut them off, it doesn't mean make them up. And then there's like a another CAD image of it made up there. And then you've got a parts call out. Nice copy of the decals there. Not too many to go on. And you've got the two paint schemes. Oh, complete confuse that blister thing underneath as I say you've got the uh, 
Appearance, yes, for sugar one. Another page of this. Oh yes, there we go. This is now. This is a um, prune one, Admiral Prune. So and then you go over the page and you got the yes for sugar one. So you got views of both sides, which I like. View of, view of the other service and view of the other side. And then you got stencil called out. Oh, that's the and then on the back you got paint call out for so AK, Tamiya and Guns, Mr Hobby. So nice to have the uh, the options of three different sorts. So there we go. In cooperation with AK Interactive and Large Scale Modeler. So quite a hefty book. Oh, a bit dusty. So now I suppose you would all want to see the sprues. I'm not going to undo both sides of the fuse and arch for obvious reasons. Uh, let's spruce C. Not sure what that is. But anyway, let's have a little look. And the sun's gone in, so it's got a bit darker. So let's confuse the camera and bring a light in. Right, I don't know how much of this you will see. But there is some very, very fine rivet detail on that. Very, very good. Nice panel lines. Not overstated, just right in my opinion. Or well, my humble opinion. That's the outside. And then you've got all the, the ribs and stringers on the inside. Um, I mean, that is so well moulded, I can't even see an eject pin marking that. That is very, very nice. Quite a size. Very nice. As I say, I'm not sure what these bits are. These look like they could be intakes or something. You know, because there's six of them. No idea what they are. But we will tuck those back in there. Along with those. See that brings up. Over there. I like that they've got resealable bags, you've got to cut them open. So the wings are together, look. So it can actually give you an idea what the fit will be like. To me, that looks like that fit is going to be great. Again, I hope you guys can see it. Bring my lights up. Yeah, I hope you'll catch that. You can see the rivets on there, I hope. If we take this apart, that looks so well together, I can't get it apart. There you go. That's the inside. That's a little lovely. But strange that you can't do move the ailerons but I'm sure there's some very clever people out there who will because you do have a gap moulded in it although that one's a little bit clean so it really won't be too hard to cut those off to make them positionable very nice one little blemish in the middle of that square there it's like a moulding pip not so that's not too bad. Again, amazing. Put that one away. Right, this one you've got all the engine assemblies in. Now this one is going to say it's not a resealable bag. So really nice. I expect these are a little bit over scale, these, but. Um, 
who's really going to fuss about that. Really, really fine detail. Well done, Hong Kong models. I've never built one of your kits. And also, oh, look at this. Look, they've marks there. So you could cut those out to expose the engines. Top notch. Top notch. It'd be nice to have one engine exposed. Really good, I guess they're the gear doors, aren't they? Again, absolutely lovely. Really, really nice. And you've got the tail planes, tops and bottoms. And no, they haven't repeated that mistake. Vertical stabilizers. What the hell are those bits? <laughs> but obviously, I would imagine there's something to do with the wings. Yeah. Part of the flaps, aren't they? Are they? Because that's the back of the nacelle. Again, such superb detail. I bet my camera's not picking that up. Hold it still, and maybe it'll pick some of the rivet detail up. Really, really nice. I'm sorry I'm wasting time putting this away as I go, but I just want to make sure I can remember which bags they go in. And I'm sorry if the cracking is very loud. Taking the bombs out, we all know what bombs look like. I wouldn't know if they're correct or not. Oh, you've got the, uh, the uh, propeller blades on there as well. Anti tight, not the paddle blades. So, hopefully, I'll bring up a bit. Let's take the light away again because the sun's coming out. So, hopefully, you're not getting too much reflection. Already I can see they've got weighted wheels. As soon as you're identical screws, I'll try to get this one out. So on here, maybe we do need a bit of extra light. Maybe not, don't know. Anyway, weight on wheels, nicely bulged. Merlin engines complete with ignition harnesses, spot looks things. I can't tell just a minute. No, for, for some reason I thought they'd managed to somehow mould the uh, exhaust to hollow ends on them. But obviously, yeah, those engines are pretty good considering this thing. And of course, you've got the uh, landing gear legs here. Nicely detailed, they're in shot. I'll bring the wheels in. Very nice. Turbochargers, superchargers, whatever they used. <coughs> to the um, flight deck here, ends of the bomb bays, uh, tail wheel, yoke, tail wheel, and it's got an anti-shimmy tail wheel as well. It's rather good control column. Bring it up again as I say. Let you all have a little look at the sprue. Even the radio sets are detailed. Fantastic. Here we've got the Bombay door. Now that does have some ejector pin marks in there by the looks of things, which would be tricky to remove. But they're going to be covered by the bombs, maybe. Uh, that's the first slight 
criticism of the kit, I'm not entirely sure. They'll be there. Got the intakes. Are they aerials? I'm not sure. Instrument panel. I didn't see a decal for the instrument panels. Let me just show you those. What well, I assume are ejector pin marks. They seem quite regular. So no, they can't be ejector pin marks because ejector pin marks are on the back there. So they are part of the moulding. Excellent. Absolutely superb. Firewalls. More radio bits. Hope this is all coming out for you guys. Let me show you some of that. And behind it in case it's not focusing. Very nice. Very, very, very. I keep saying that. No, no, but it is. Not a word for it. It's a good kit. Bombay doors on it. Bombay doors with rivet, is it rivet detail in there? Some sort of yeah, the light keeps going in and out here. Yeah, rivet detail inside the Bombay doors and on the outside. And various other components. Don't ask me what they all are. Part of the engine could they be the radiators? Pilot seat. Fairing, around the up, mid upper, machine guns, machine guns look quite good. Very nice, try and bring you in for some of the details again. Got the machine guns here and the uh, fairing. There's a pilot seat. Gone, there's a pilot seat. And various other bits and bobs for the aircraft in general. Clear parts out. That's for the opening. Oh, what they change it? Oh boy, they are clear. This big blister here has even got a. Another bit of tape over it to protect it, as has that turret. Well, in fact, they all have. That one hasn't. But they are very clear indeed. Don't know how much you can see through there. Remember, I've just got a little crappy setup. Brilliant. Perfect. Obviously, there's always distortion in these things, but they are clear as anything. They are really nice. As I say, Gonna wait for a mask set for this. Too much to do. Anyway, guys, that's um, that's the end of the review. Again, thank you very much to Salisbury Models. I found him up uh, Sunday, and he made sure there was one put aside for me. Uh, didn't even require a deposit or anything so if you're in the lovely city of Salisbury check him out I think he's in Fisherton Street can't exactly remember his address but uh, check him out I think his name is Declan he's a really nice guy he does a bit of everything plastic kits model railways it's lots of uh, AK paints I believe Davleo paints I think he stocks uh, he's got Tamiya he's also got Mr. Ho Hobby, Mr. Colour ones I believe um, yeah, I bought a couple of paints as well from him. Smashing bloke, he's just over the hour's drive from me from where I live in Surrey and he's probably the, the best model shop closest to me. There are others. Um, 
the stalking models he's got as well but yeah, as I say if you're in the Wiltshire area you're probably in the model you already know about him but um, check him out if you fancy a drive down on a Saturday park in the central car park and he's five minutes walk from there if that so it's nice and convenient so big thanks to us but I don't usually do plugs, but I will on this one. Thank you very much, Salisbury Model Centre. I will see you again. Okay, everyone, thanks very much for watching. Bye.